This is Super Machine. It allows you to take a single line of text or even a simple line drawing and turn it into amazing looking artwork. And right now you can get lifetime access to Super Machine for a one-time fee thanks to AppSumo's early Black Friday sale for 2023. Welcome to AppSumo. But it doesn't just do AI generation, it also does face swaps. So what happens when you take your very own ugly mug and put it on the body of King Sumo himself, Noah Kagan? I bet you wanna see, I'll show you at the end of the video. What's up, LTD addicts? AppSumo's released a few Black Friday deals a little bit early. Now, the majority of them are gonna go live on November 19th, but there's a link down below to check out what's available right now. I'll also leave a link to sign up for their Apple Vision Pro giveaway contest. They're giving away seven of those virtual reality sets from Apple when they're released in the spring, so go ahead and get registered for that. What do you got to lose? I wanna thank AppSumo for sponsoring today's video so I can teach you a little bit about generative art. I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel like I missed a day in class where they explained all of these technical terms related to generative art. Super Machine is using technology called Stable Diffusion, an open source project where the community contributes different models or styles of images that can be generated by Stable Diffusion. Super Machine is doing all of the heavy processing for you, so you don't need to have a super fast PC in order to run these models. So you can see at the top here, it says select a model and you can scroll through or use some of the categories to find different models. Now the term model, I think is confusing to a lot of people because you might be thinking, oh, well, I guess this guy is the model or this lady is the model. But when it comes to AI art, that's not quite how it works. In order for AI to create art for us, it needs to be trained on some data. That training data results in a model which allows us to create art in a specific style. So if you're looking for pixel art, you might want to choose this model right here. With Super Machine, I can click on the eye and get some information about what the model contains. And if I click on the eye again, I'll see a portfolio of images that were created using this model. So you can see there's some major Super Nintendo vibes here. Or maybe you wanna generate some portrait photography. Well, there's a model for that. You can see a lot of these have a Lord of the Rings type of mystic vibe to them. My point here is that having a lot of models available makes prompting a lot easier because you're kind of already in the right ballpark just by choosing a model. I'm gonna try using this cute wave model right now. And my prompt is gonna be a happy boy eating a bowl of ice cream. Now there's some more options to go over here, but let's get started by actually making some art. All right, my image is generating right now. All right, this is pretty adorable and it was obviously super easy to create. There was no fancy prompting involved. Now I'm gonna switch over to the Super Machine General model, which was actually trained on images from Mid Journey 5.1. And this time, instead of sticking with this very basic prompt, I'm gonna use their magic prompt button over here. This is a lot like the I'm feeling lucky button over on Google in that it takes your original prompt and then just adds some extra keywords to it to give it some more information for how to generate the image. All right, let's generate this one. All right, I think this is pretty adorable as well. All right, I've stripped off all of the parameters that the magic prompt added before, and this time I'm gonna use the prompt guide. The magic prompt added a bunch of parameters for us without having any consideration for what we are actually after. However, if you have a good idea of the style of image you wanna generate, you just don't know exactly how to phrase it, that's where the prompt guide comes into play. So maybe you're looking for a colored pencil style illustration with a comic book style. All right, let's generate this image. All right, there we go, very adorable again. I'd say this one is probably my least favorite of the three. It does have some problems, like his thumb here looks a little bit funny. So with all generative art, iteration is key and just being patient. Know that you're already saving a ton of time. So if you don't get it right on the very first attempt, that's okay. We're actually learning a brand new skill right now and it's gonna take some time to really understand all of the possibilities and features that are built in. Now there are some more settings for prompting right here under advanced settings. These are the terms that usually make people's eyes wanna glaze over. Some of this stuff is obvious like image ratio. They even give you a nice little picture to show you what it's gonna look like here. So if you're doing something for YouTube, you could make a 16 by nine thumbnail. Or if it's gonna go on Instagram, obviously do one by one. And then we've got things like image size right here. And notice that as I move the image size up, the amount of credits that it takes to generate the image actually increases. 
in case you're wondering, the image ratio doesn't change that at all. So I could do 16 by nine, it's still gonna take one credit. And then you have the number of images output and you don't get a discount if you do more than one at a time. You can go from one credit up to two credits, up to four credits, one credit per image without any modifications to the basic settings. But then there's everything over here and everything over here. And this is where it gets a little bit confusing. A great way to learn about these settings is actually to look at prompts that other people have had success with. With Super Machine, there's really two ways to do this. You can go into a model and view the portfolio. That's this eye that'll open up the portfolio page and we can see some of the nicest images that were generated using this model. You can see there's lots of different styles here, but they're all being generated from this one particular model. The other way to browse examples of other people's prompts is to click on the search button up here and then you can go ahead and search for what you're trying to create. I'll say a delicious burger and hit search. Now I'm gonna get examples of burgers that were created. However, there's no curation going on here. So we're gonna see the best of the best as well as the worst of the worst. If you're looking for specific examples, this is a good place to start. But if you just wanna get high quality prompts that you can modify, well then I recommend going into the prompt portfolios. Let's head back there. So back to Super Machine Photo, open up the portfolio. If I saw one that caught my eye, like this juicy burger here, I could click on it. And now I've got a lot of detailed information about how the image was created. I've got a prompt, so that was the plain text that was entered. And then I've also got a negative prompt, which is all of the words that it's been told not to include inside of the image generation. You can also see some of the advanced settings down here, like the image ratio and the image size, which we covered, but there's four more parameters that are very critical to getting this particular look. The first one is the seed image, and basically that's where in the training data the image is being started from. I pulled open my clipboard manager here, and I'm just going to go ahead and copy this information in. I'll copy the prompt, I'll copy the negative prompt, and I'll copy the seed. I can also see that the number of steps was set to 30. Essentially, the number of steps is how detailed the image is going to be. A higher amount of steps is gonna cost you more credits because it's actually using more GPU power. Now, higher steps isn't always better. The scale goes from 20 to 80, and we'll see that as we generate a prompt in a second. Now, I can't copy this setting because it's actually a slider on the image generation, so I'm just gonna remember it. And then I also wanna remember the sampler. This is another setting that has to do with how the image is actually created. And this will take some experimentation to figure out which samplers you prefer. A great way to learn about this is just by looking at other prompts like we're doing right now. So remember that the restart sampler was used. And then the CFG scale was seven. Okay, so remember all of those things. Now you might notice there is a clone button right here, but if you clone this prompt, unfortunately, all of the advanced data does not pull in. So I like to just go ahead and start from scratch. All right, so we are using the Super Machine photo model. I'm gonna replace the prompt with the same prompt as that burger. But you know what, this is AppSumo, so we're not gonna do a burger generation. Let's do a taco generation. I think everything else about the prompt looks good. So this is how you can get inspired by other people's prompts and then modify them to suit your own needs. All right, now I'm gonna hit the advanced settings down here and I'm gonna enter in my negative prompt. Again, just pasting exactly what they had in theirs. Now, remember the next thing I copied was the seed number. I want to not use this random seed number, so I'm gonna toggle this off and now I get another box to paste in the seed number that that hamburger image used. Now, remember our CFG scale? Well, that is the setting over here. It's called prompt guidance when you're entering in your prompt. And I wish they'd said CFG here is just to make it easier for people, but we can see it goes from five all the way up to 12. Essentially, this is going to give the AI more permission to be creative or to stay very strict to the prompt. Our setting was seven, and that's gonna be leaning more towards creative. Next up, we have steps. And this, as I mentioned before, is how much CPU power and how fast is this image gonna be generated? And as it says over here, that slower is not always better, but often it is. So right now we're gonna leave this set at 30 out of 80. Notice the credits up here as I tick this up. Every time I go up a notch, it increases 0.1 credits. Now we'll talk in a minute about how many credits you get, but I do wanna point out where we're spending more and less credits. All right, 20 is the default. It doesn't cost you anything extra, but for this one, I'm gonna go up to 30, which costs me 0.2 extra. We're almost ready to generate the image, but first I wanna set the sampler. 
they used a sampler called Restart. And this is probably the most complex part of the entire thing because there are a ton of different sampler options. And Restart is gonna be right down here near the bottom. And really the best way to get a feel for this, like I said before, is just to see what a lot of prompts are using that you like. The default one is always called Euler A, and that one generally looks pretty good in most situations. But here we're back on Restart. Now Super Machine does have this nice little feature where we can actually create albums. So if I wanted to put this in say my food product shots, now I've got an album of food product shots. All right, let's go ahead and generate this. So here is the burger and here are our tacos. I mean, pretty impressive. It definitely looks like it was taken by the same photographer. The lighting and everything really is similar. Once you have your images generated, there's a few more things you can do. When you hover over an image, you can see there's some menu options here. For this particular one, I'm just gonna delete it. And they do ask you for a little bit of feedback for why you're deleting it. And I'm just gonna say that I don't like the output. And I'll hit delete. Now remember, I generated this at only 512 by 512. So if I wanted this at a higher resolution, I could take my chances by regenerating the image up here at say 1024 by 1024, or I could go over here and upscale it. Upscaling does cost another credit, but it's kind of nice here if you read the description, they give you some options for doing it for free if you wanna run it on your own system rather than using the super machine system. There are two options for upscaling. You can either do upscaling 4X or upscaling with facial enhancement. Now this obviously doesn't have a face in it, it's a picture of tacos. So I'm just gonna do the regular upscaling. When you do the upscaling, it downloads automatically to your computer. It takes about seven seconds is the estimate that they give and I find that to be pretty accurate. All right, and there's the image upscaled on my computer. It looks pretty amazing, like that looks delicious. The next option over from upscaling is this little paintbrush. And if I click on this, now this looks like the world's worst image editor, but it's actually fairly cool. So what I can do is actually generate a new image based on this particular image here. So I'm gonna get rid of this because I'm not sure if it's supposed to be a beer or it's some nacho cheese, but I'm gonna get rid of that for my image. Now this does not have in painting or out painting yet. So if you're familiar with those terms, uh, which I have not defined, but if you're familiar with those terms, uh, know that they are supposedly coming, but they're not available right now. But what I can do is generate another image off of this. So I'm gonna change the prompt to be add some chips and I'll generate a new image from this. Now I have found that when using the canvas option, the image doesn't show up right away. The screen refreshes like it's going to, but if I actually refresh manually, that's when I can see my image. All right, and that's funny to me because I'm American, so it actually added French fries where the tacos were, uh, and there's a bowl of cheese in the background. So again, iteration is key when it comes to image generation. This was not what I was going for, although it still looks pretty delicious. I'm not sure who eats a bowl of cheese with their fries, but maybe if it was melted. You can also get to the canvas up here from the top menu, and you can just draw something that you want. All right, so I am sticking with the food theme and I am drawing some pizza here. All right, I added the prompt, a delicious slice of pizza, and let's see what we get. My expectation is that it will be in that same type of view, like where it's a top-down view. And there we go, there's my pizza, like magic. Except it looks like it's got tomatoes on it instead of pepperonis, which is what I had in mind. No problem, I'll open it up in Canvas. So this time, my prompt is gonna be to add some pepperonis and sausage to the pizza. Now, while this is generating, you might be wondering, am I still gonna get charged for using this image even though I didn't like it? And the answer is yes. And that's because you're utilizing the GPU and the electricity and the system resources in order to actually generate that image. I think the way that the credit system works is actually more than fair. You're gonna see in a second that you get a ton of credits and it's really not that big a deal. Just know that iteration is part of the experience. All right, there we go. We got our pepperonis, they're even cupped. Up in the menu bar here, the third option over is tools. And there's currently two tools available. There's background removal, as well as face swap, which I teased you with at the beginning of the video. We'll get to face swap in a moment, but first let's look at background removal. So you can either upload your own image or you can grab an image from any of your generated images. For me, I'm gonna go find that little boy eating the ice cream, this one right here. And I'll use this image. And background removal is gonna take two credits. So I'll click here. There we go, now the background is removed. Super clean, I could download this image. It would be a transparent PNG file, so I could use it on a website with the background behind it, looking really good. Now you might be thinking this is generated art, so of course it's gonna be easier for background removal. Well, let me throw something a little bit more difficult at it. 
So here is my wife, Amy, and I. There are two people in the photo. We have very messy hair, so this is typically really difficult to do background removal. And also, the sun is shining behind us, and you can see there is a lot of light on our hair here. So this is a real test. It's very difficult to distinguish where the hairline ends and the sun begins. This will be a good test of the background removal. All right, so here it is. You can see it's pretty clean. Like I said, this was a very difficult example. It just missed a chunk of her hair up here, and I think it could be a little bit tighter on her curly hair at the top. Curly hair is extremely difficult to mask out. When it comes to credits, you're gonna get 1,000 credits per month, and then those will automatically refresh month after month. So I think it's gonna be pretty hard to utilize all 1,000 unless you're just living inside of this application day in and day out. The better you get at prompting and the more you use Super Machine, the fewer results you'll have to toss away. So those credits will actually end up going even further. Okay, I'm gonna wrap this video up, but before I do, I wanna remind you to hit the like button for this video so we can reach some more people. Also, make sure to check the link in the description to get your lifetime deal for Super Machine. All right, the moment that you have been waiting for, what's gonna happen when I merge with Noah Kagan? All right, let's do the face swap. Ooh. <laughs> I, I mean, it's it's striking. It's fairly good, is it not? Let's let's compare. They should definitely put both of the images side by side so you could see the the merger because that's actually kind of frightening. There it is. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. See you in the next one.